so hi anusha hi how are you i am good how are you i'm good good so yeah very first thing i would like to know is uh, how was your second lockdown my second lockdown i think was uh a little easier than the first in that sense um because we kind of got used to the rules and regulations we understood how it it was so necessary to stay safe indoors you know our country was obviously and is going through but i think we're going to get stronger and better together you know we're all coming together and i love that you know no matter what happens in our country um the people always come together somehow i saw you as a vj i saw you as a model and i just loved your personality so i just want to know personally that how it all started so i'm a big believer in dreaming and i was a big dreamer when i was little but i think i always had a goal and the goal was that i was going to be an mtv vj since the age of 9 So at 9 years of age I made up my mind and I was in Australia and I told everybody that that's what I'm going to do and I guess I put it out there in the universe and it came to me and I'm very very grateful. <laughs> so how into acting? Um well acting kind of happened by accident. Um but my dad has always been really fond of acting and he's done a lot of plays. on stage a lot of stage work and i watched him direct and act in australia a lot um you know on stage and he always had a passion for it and i guess my mom is also a really good singer and she was always she was in a band when she was younger so they i think we had performing arts in the family so when i stumbled upon acting it was honestly just a coincidence because i joined mtv and the first film that i got um offered was a song in a film by matinee lutke and pritish nandi and rangita had both seen me i guess on mtv then mahesh mandrek had seen me on mtv so i think that exposure and then i kind of just did a couple here and there but uh, it was never my my main goal when i came here djing was the main goal but the uh... because you are from australia did, did you find it difficult uh, to cope up with hindi because oh, you know, like in bollywood jab tak aap hindi nahi bolte ho tab tak you know you are a foreign actor so how difficult actually was? worked differently for me kyunki main hindi nahi baat kar rahi thi so i was actually cast as the nri all the time <laughs> so like the broken hindi which didn't require acting because my hindi was broken <laughs> so it it didn't actually matter but then i didn't want to keep playing the nri girl you know so i i just stuck to being a vj but i love hosting i mean i love that but i do enjoy acting also i really do enjoy acting i just didn't feel like i ever after the couple of films that i did i never got something that i really wanted to do but um yes hindi was a huge problem for me in that way and i was just so lazy to learn you know because for me i only thought the only language i needed to know was marathi and you know at home so <laughs> i didn't know hindi was the language that you needed to know when you came to india you know because for me it was like from australia i went straight to pune everybody spoke marathi so i was like yeah i can get by like this and anyway finally um it actually started on mtv when i started doing more shows over the years and it demanded english a lot you know so even if it was something like a uh, top model supermodel love school a lot of hindi was required and so yeah i started speaking it getting more confident and i enjoy it now so i can actually have conversations and uh, <laughs> speak it <laughs> wonderful and uh now we got to know that you have your own brand now beauty brand that is brown skin beauty so i want to know how it all came into your mind so when i was growing up i i have to tell you that my parents never raised me as different to anybody else you know so even being in australia i didn't realize that i come from a different place or my culture is different because at home it was never 
you're different, you know? And I love that. Like, I think every parent should raise their kid like that. You know, you're all human beings. But somewhere, obviously, uh, during school, when I was much younger, um, it got pointed out that I have darker skin than most. So they would call me like chocolate milk or, you know, chocolate. Or and I didn't understand what they meant. For me, it was really confusing. I'm like, what? So I would run home and tell my dad. And he would just kind of like tell me, don't worry, it's okay. You know, chocolate is nice, you know, that's nice. So, but I, I, I didn't understand that I was supposed to be offended by it because I didn't find it, like I didn't see myself different to anybody. So I was confused. And then I experienced a little bit of racism here and there, not a lot. And then when I came to India, I thought, wow, okay, this is like, we're all the same. So, you know, it can't be. But I realized there was more racism here. And that was scary because we are supposed to be one. Like we're from the same place, you know, we're all desis. Like how can we be hating on each other? So I couldn't understand the concept only. Why are people being so racist towards each other? And why do we drill this into the mindset that a different skin color is better than another? That's unfair, unkind, and it has to stop. Then I started doing shows like Top Model and Supermodel and yeah. the deeper toned girls, the different shades of brown that would come on our set and compete would tell me really terrible stories about how they face racism in college, in school, at home. How can your own family be racist against you, you know? So I realized this is a mentality that unfortunately we've been a part of for so long now so many years and it has to change and so one day I don't know the name just came to me brown skin beauty that's what I'm going to call my beauty brand and it happened and the amount of girls like yourself that have come to me and said thank you for making us part of the beauty industry honestly I am so flattered that they thank me but I want to thank them because they deserve it. All of us deserve to be included together. So that's where it came from. I love it. I love it a lot. <laughs> Thank you uh, so much. Now, because uh, you were a part of the TV industry and uh, you worked a lot. I want to ask because of the lockdown, we have been watching a lot of shows, a lot of series. Who is your favorite artist or your favorite web series that you love binge watching? Uh, <laughs> okay, so I mean, if I need to just unwind and have the TV on in the background, then it has to be a comedy. So my favorites are Schitt's Creek. Okay. I love it. The script writing is so beyond good and the actors and everything. Friends is obviously just like your daily <laughs> dose of laughter yeah. and I actually really got into the Big Bang Theory also I really liked it it's really funny <laughs> but yeah. um if I'm watching uh anything like drama wise um I loved Bridgerton oh my god so good <laughs> and um yeah I think that's all like you know I go blank when people ask me this because I think we've all had an overdose of Netflix. <laughs> Can't even remember what we watch anymore. <laughs> yeah. So if you're watching Big Bang Theory, then I can guess Sheldon must be your favorite character. The best. <laughs> the best. I still to date watch him and wonder how he remembers his dialogues. Like, I know. what is a ge That's genius. I just, I can't imagine. <laughs> now, uh, talking about racism, did you face uh, such kind of, different kind of comments while you were working professionally or it was just into the societal matter, like some of your friends or somebody commented or is, was it in professional life also? No, it's actually really funny because in Australia, it was because they thought I was a deeper or a darker tone. And very few, I'm not going to say that it was like every day, it was very, very few and when I was much younger. And then in India, I think I felt reverse racism because they think I'm fair here. Mm -hmm. I didn't face it. So it's so confusing to me. It's like, you know, a lot of people think I'm not even brown. 
And I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> I am very much a brown girl. And this is what I think in India, we get very confused what brown is. All of us are a shade of brown, whether you're from Kashmir or the northern part of India, where you might be a little fairer, or if you're a deeper tone or a darker tone from anywhere in India, the point is that everybody is a shade of brown. They think that, oh no, if she's darker or deeper, that means she's brown. But that's all of us. Every single one of us is a shade of brown. There's a, if you look at a color palette of brown, we could point out each color is one of us. And it's beautiful. You know, everywhere in the world, now people think, wow, they're so exotic, so beautiful. I don't understand why we can't tell ourselves that, you know? So, and most of our girls on top model and supermodel, the deeper shades were so stunning. Like, it's crazy to me that anybody could like make them feel bad, you know? While I used to watch a uh, supermodel, Lisa Hayden, you were all, you know, the beautiful ladies on the show and we loved it. I mean, you know, look at them. I, every, I, yeah, I think everybody should start embracing their beauty. Everybody looks different for a reason. Imagine we all look the same. What's the fun in that? Nothing is fun in that. You know, I mean, look at your beautiful hair. I mean, I sit for hours trying to get hair like this. You know what I mean? So everybody has their beauty. They just have to really look at themselves. And I, you know, I recommend this. Go to the mirror and point out three things that you love about yourself and do it every day. So you start feeling good about yourself, you know? I don't want girls to feel bad anymore, or boys. So the sense of acceptance is the first step towards feeling 100%. beautiful. And Hundred percent. Look, a lot of people can tell us a lot of things, right? And it will only affect us because we don't believe in our own self. So the minute we start giving ourselves self-love, it is. I've been on that journey for so long now, and the, because for us in in this industry, we get targeted day in and day out and loads of comments, most of them positive, which I'm really blessed and thankful for. But yes, we get lots of negativity and it can only affect you if you're not sure of who you are. So you have to, it's how you talk to yourself. Are you being kind to yourself? Are you telling yourself nice things? If you wake up and you're so negative to yourself, let me tell you, every negative comment will come and, and, and affect you, you know? So it starts with you, it starts with you. Then it doesn't matter if it's family, friends, strangers, bots, whatever it is, it's not going to affect you. Now your product, how long does it take to develop them? Like uh, this project you had in mind since how long? So it's really funny actually, uh, the beginning of lockdown, um, the brain child came with my partner and me, Gaurav, and we built it over six months. We were just like, okay, you know, we've got this time. We have to use it wisely. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this brand now. And I was in LA. He was here. So it was two different countries, two different time zones, but we didn't stop. We were working 24-7 and we created this beautiful brand that, you know, we're just so very proud of. And it took us six months of testing, sampling, you know, going through the ingredients, really kind of making sure that the packaging is right, the creatives are right, every single thing. And I even ran a contest because I wanted real girls of India to be the faces of our campaign. So many beautiful women. Over thousands of girls entered and we, it was the hardest thing to just choose 20, but it was an amazing experience. I cried for three days just reading all of their comments and their, because they were so happy with this brand. It, 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 it was beautiful. So this is the process, like it's very long. Uh, actually, that's actually not long at all. Six months was uh, the quickest I think anyone could build a brand, especially a skin brand. But we took advantage of the fact that my shoots had stopped, my traveling had stopped, you know, my other commitments had put, been put on hold. So 
six months is a very small time to build an entire brand for skin products. You know, we have to be so particular about what we're putting in, how the formula works, is it right? You know, all of that. So we did it so quickly because we had the time to do it, you know? So we want to take that time as a big blessing for us because normally it can take years. Now, what is the uh, shelf life? Because when I heard about this brand and my research, I got to that these are all natural products. So what is the shelf life compared to the other products? So... Yes, there's natural products, but we also have safe chemicals in there because they're required for your skin. Like niacinamide is a chemical, but it's really good for your skin. We also have aloe vera, we have turmeric. So we mix the wholesome uh, organic products with the chemicals that are good for your skin. And obviously we have a small quantity of preservatives because we need to have a shelf life, especially in a country like India where it's extensively hot we go through monsoons, we go through, and we need the products to stay fresh. So yes, we do it much less. And we're, you know, we want to be way more particular. So our shelf life is definitely a good six months, for sure, six months to a year. Um, but we know that you're going to love the product, that you're going to use it continuously. So I think in like a month or two, anywhere you'd order a new one or in three months <laughs> maximum. <laughs> because our tubs are like really full. Like if you order the cream, we give you a lot. You know, we don't give you like this little tiny bit. We give you a lot and we want you to use it. We want you to enjoy it. And it's, yeah, and it's like really good quality. And it was our goal to stay affordable and, you know, I don't think skincare should only be for the people that can afford expensive things. That's never been my goal. It's not my target audience. I think if you have a good product, share it with everybody you can, you know? And so I'm really happy that people are able to afford it. Um, our packaging is also super important to us. Even in those six months, we fought to use glass packaging, recycled glass and recycled cardboard because that was so important to us because the environment is also important to us. If the environment can give us things like aloe vera and turmeric, then we need to give back to the environment and make sure we're not using plastic. So that was really important. And it's more expensive, but we didn't care. You know, we still kept the prices down. We still made sure we were affordable, even though we're spending more on packaging. Now, what is the upcoming product that you are thinking of? Well, we just launched one and I'm going to show you one second. This is our new product. Wow. Play-Doh. So cool. really really, yeah, it's really, really cool. I chose red for this one because that is exactly kind of what our red algae looks like. That's the main ingredient. And red algae is so good for your skin because it just cleans it, refreshes it, hydrates it, moisturizes it, and gets rid of all the kind of dirt and stuff that you don't need. So really, really excited about it. And um, we just launched it like three, four days ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how are you taking the feedback? Like, I am very sure there must be some of the other negative ones because haters not <laughs> no I don't call them haters I feel like honest reviews are very welcome and sometimes look in any product in the world makeup uh, skin products hair products like I said we're not all built the same right our hair is not the same our skin is not the same we I have very sensitive skin somebody will have dry so worldwide nobody in this world can get one product 100% right for everybody, right? But we have to be really grateful that 99% of our customers, touch wood, they have loved our products. And we've got amazing reviews, amazing comments, amazing feedback, uh, repeat customers, customers loving it, buying it for their families and friends. That's amazing. And you will get your few customers that will say, look, this reacted to my skin like this or this didn't feel right. And that's okay because we'll always help them. You know, we'll ask them. And, and we always say anyway, every person for any skin product in the world should always do a patch test because there are some skin products that I wouldn't even know would react to my skin. You know, you just don't know. But um, no, we, we haven't had 
we've had really very few, but we immediately respond to them. We want to know what they used, what's the problem, what they're not liking, and we fix it, you know? So, you know, we'll always go back into the ingredients, try to find out. But honestly, if we've got a thousand customers for one product one day, it'll be maybe one customer, you know, in a week or a month that will come back and say that they, you know, had an issue. So how was it uh, like taking all these things in the lockdown? Was it the same or there was any difference? I think if I'm going to just look at the positive, because there was obviously a lot of like, you know, <laughs> a lot going on, which you didn't understand in the lockdown. But if I take the positive, it was that I had a lot of time to use it wisely. And I think that's what we did. You know, we created this. <laughs> I'm surely going to order the product because I'm so already obsessed with them. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Thank you. Tell me what you think. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> uh, I want to know what is that one project or one book that you are really proud of? Me? Look, uh, for me, knowing that I wanted to be on MTV since I was nine, MTV is always going to be a proud moment for me no matter what I do in my life, wherever I go in my life, that will always be my proudest moment. And two, I'm going to have to say, not because I'm doing this interview and it just seems convenient, but Brown Skin Beauty is, is my proud moment. Because for me, if I can include every single girl in my country into the beauty segment, into the beauty category, into the belief that all of us are beautiful because we're different, then I'm doing something right and I want to do that. You know, it's time somebody did it. So I like it that it's me. <laughs> now, how difficult is it for you to handle two things at time? Because I'm very sure work must always be on, scripts must be coming your way for television. Then you also have to handle this. So how do you manage your time? <laughs> so the first uh, few months, I was really overwhelmed. Because for me, when you're doing a shoot, you do your shoot and then you go home and it's finished. You don't have to think about it. But uh, for business, it doesn't end. It's 24 seven. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. My entire life is now revolving around this. And I don't just have brown skin beauty. I also have a clothing line called Muru, which stands for man up, woman up which is also an incredible brand because it basically talks about, you know, manning up and womaning up, which means that stand up for yourself, you know, believe in yourself, do what's right for you. So man up, woman up, Muru is also a clothing brand, which our summer collection is also going to come out very, very soon. I just designed it all. So I'm very excited. And um, yeah, it's like, I have that brown skin beauty <laughs> luckily again I'm still not shooting yet so I'm okay but I have to start my YouTube channel again which I'm doing now and so there's just so much going on and social media and so many things and I realize now it doesn't stop <laughs> it never stops so it's a little overwhelming like you wake up in the morning and you think oh okay I've got nothing to do today and I'm like oh no I have so much to do today <laughs> You know, you're so. motivating me so much. Oh, good. You know what? I think that's also a really uh, beautiful thing about this brand is that it's not just including women in beauty. I think seeing women in business is something so inspiring, you know, and I've seen so many women in business that inspired me. And now I feel so inspired to inspire others. That's a lot of inspiration. <laughs> Uh, talking about all the work that you did that is acting and you're coming up with your own brands be that a uh, clothing brand or a beauty brand what is that one thing that is uh, you know keeping you hitched to that uh, line of work in all these parts I think it's brand Anusha you know if I keep building me then everything else keeps building and that is the hardest part uh, because sometimes you have days where you don't feel like 
sharing your life with the world. <laughs> you know, you just want to like crawl into bed and not, not do that today. But if I stop, then my brands will stop, you know? And so it's always going to be a mission to share my truth, to share my life, to share my emotions, to share my realness. Because if I'm asking women to be real about their, you know, about themselves and love who they are, then I have to show them how to do it. If I'm telling men and women to stand up and woman up and man up, then I have to do that, you know? And so wherever I go, in whatever show I do or wherever I am on Instagram or whatever, I'm just sharing my truth all the time. This is who I am. And if I inspire you today, and I'm honest with you, then you will believe that I'm being honest with my brands as well. So good. <laughs> so, when are we seeing you next? Um, well, you just saw me today. <laughs> I would you know, love to um, see you every time soon. You are allowed me to meet you, but when are we seeing you next on television? On television, I don't know. You know, we were about to start our show and then it got postponed again because our, you know, next lockdown happened. So I can't promise anything like that. Um, I am not going on Big Boss. I don't know why. <laughs> Rumors. I am not doing that. Um, but I wish everyone the best, whoever is. And um, so I told everyone they can see me next on my YouTube channel now. That will be starting very soon. I'm excited to get that back. And I'm actually changing the name of my YouTube channel to Brown Skin Beauty. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, a person like me, where can I order your products on? So everybody can. Sure. Great question. We have two great platforms to order it from. First is our own platform, which is www.thebsbshop.com. And there you can order actually the four pack and you get a pouch for free. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. One second. So this is our free pouch. The goodies are all in. Yes. And uh, actually, you know, I really, really fought to get this design because I loved it so much. And if you look at the back, it says, whatever you're brown, it's beautiful. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so I mean it's all like crinkled right now because it was packed but yeah it says whatever you're brown it's beautiful and then obviously you have brown skin beauty and it's got so much room honestly this pouch is amazing you can fit so, so much cute. inside it. yeah it's yeah. really really cute so you get this pouch free if you order the entire immortal set um, which has four amazing products it's got the face cream the face wash the serum and the roll-on. And the roll-on <laughs> is actually an aloe vera roll-on that I invented. So I'm very, very proud of that. <laughs> it's like I'm really good. I'm your products today itself. I'm so excited. Yay. <laughs> but aloe vera roll-on is just like a great refresher for the skin, really good for under the eyes. And, uh, yeah, we've got really good reviews from that. So excited. And then you can also go on Nika, which has been an amazing partner with us. Um, and I'm really happy to know that so many girls that work in Nike love our products. So that makes me so happy. <laughs> so yeah, you can go on Nike as well. So now people will know where to order from and I'm very sure everybody sees this interview will order from Brown Skin Beauty. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and also when you, when you order this, you get a free brush, which I'll quickly show you. Uh, Sorry. Probably. So you get a free brush and it's called Play-Doh brush and it basically is just a really cool applicator. So it looks like this. It's really, really cool because you know what? We aren't really, um, we don't want you to keep using your fingers. So the maximum amount of germs come from your hands, right? So if you use this as an applicator, it's so much more hygienic. And even the aloe roll-on is this because you can keep it in your purse if you travel on a bus or a train and you're just feeling like you need a refresher, you can just roll it on your face. You thinking really of are, you know, uh, giving people with all your heart because beauty brands yeah. always charge for you in the smallest things. And here oh. you are giving much worse. 
<laughs> you know what? I know how it was growing up and being in school and college and I wanted the best stuff and I couldn't afford it. So, you know, if I have to think like that and you have to put yourself in everybody else's position, like right now also our economy is struggling. And before that, when we're in college and, you know, we don't earn a lot of money. And so we still want to look good and feel good. So we need to include everybody into our brand. Even Moo, we keep all our prices as affordable as we can, but we give you the best quality of clothing, you know, the best cotton, the best material, so it feels good on your skin and you feel fashionable. So I was asking about all that I can for brown skin beauty and I loved it. I must say that. Perfect. Thank you so much for your Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so I'm much. Good. Thank you.